Um, so the, the idea of, of this talk uh, is to go over some of the concept that we discussed when uh, we had the new marketing plan. Uh, but oh, it's okay. Um, because I think, uh, uh, in general, the, the issue or the problem or the opportunity of the project sustainability is something that we should always keep in mind uh, in general. Uh, I mean, we all uh, are here. Uh, in, in, let's say some of us are paid, and I'm one of them, to work on uh, this project. Uh, but uh, uh, we all do something more as volunteers because we love the project anyway. So even people that is earning money by hacking LibreOffice, at the end of the day is always doing something more, or at least this is my perception. I might be wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. I've been uh, in this project for uh, now for almost 20 years. I started with OpenOffice.org in late 2002, and uh, I've never really met people that were doing it only for the money. They've always, were always doing it, uh, of course, for the money. At the end of the month, we all have bills to pay, but also for some passion that is uh, infused in the project. So we, this is to say that we all want LibreOffice to be here in another 10 years, and possibly more. I mean, in another 10 years, I will be six, 78, so we, you will have to bear with me because I will probably not work very well. I will be lost most of my neurons, uh, so it, you will uh, just look at me at, like the old guy, the old poor guy. But I, anyway, some of you will be in their 60s, which is a wonderful uh, time of uh, your life, I can tell you. Uh, but everyone wants to be here in 10 years, not here in Milan, but in 10 years or somewhere to celebrate another 10 years of LibreOffice. So to, to make this happen, we have to have a sustainable project. Otherwise, we all know that we will get into oblivion in some way or another. Uh, the development will stop. Uh, the uh, project, new ideas, uh, developing new communities, uh, growing communities in other, in other geographies will stop anyway. Because uh, uh, if a product, uh, uh, if the product stalls, then the entire project around the product is bound to, uh, to, to be um, just surviving. We see that with Apache OpenOffice. I mean, uh, there are just a few people taking care of that product, and the product is sl slightly, slowly fading away. By the way, uh, in uh, just seeing the numbers, in uh, uh, today is October 1st. Uh, in September, our downloads are over almost 3,300,000 which means that we are back uh, at the level of uh, February, which was a very high month. So this means uh, that uh, back from holidays, people have started to re-download LibreOffice in a rather sustained uh, uh, pace. So let's talk a little bit about the productivity market. I will try to um, analyze and make some uh, some uh, guess on numbers. Uh, we don't pay the analyst, uh, they ask uh, outrageous amount of money, but we can find some, uh, some free uh, data around. Uh, maybe they're not last minute data. Uh, I have data from 2017. Uh, I've talked uh, two weeks ago with a friend at IDC who confirmed uh, most of those data. Of course, I cannot show the IDC data because that is confidential. We are friends, but uh, he, he shows me the data with the 
uh, with the mm, agreement that I can talk about the data but not show them because they sell them for money. So before 95, uh, documents were printed. Some people here were just born around 95, but in 95 I was uh, 40. And uh, I can tell you that for all of that my life uh, up to that moment, if I wanted to share contents with another person, I had to print the file because the uh, interoperability was basically non-existing. There were different programs. Each uh, program had its own proprietary uh, version uh, of the document, uh, and the only way you could reasonably exchange data was saving a TXT file, which was, of course, losing all the visual uh, uh, content of the document. So in, in around 95, uh, of course for some people before, but around 95 with the internet, we, uh, we, we got the incredible opportunity of exchanging contents in a digital way. Of course at first it was uh, less uh, evident. Uh, we, st we all started with PDF because PDF was the first that allowed to uh, to exchange a file in a digital way, uh, looking, seeing the same contents. Of course, it was not editable, but at least you could preserve the look and file of the, of the file. Even large files with a lot of visual content where you were able to exchange them. Uh, and, uh, uh, and that was uh, the, the vision of the guy that invented PDF was uh, we have the opportunity of exchanging that digitally, so we now we have a tool that allows that to do that without scanning the page and sending the page, which was a lot more uh, uh, longer process and more tedious. So this uh, uh, evolved, uh, uh, and uh, at that time uh, there were there were the first uh, real personal productivity. Um, application or solutions because uh, it was at more or less at that time that the office suite were born. Some were born before but were more a uh, kind of conglomerate of application while uh, uh, in the 90s they became uh, more integrated. Uh, uh, formats were cared more. People started to think about having uh, XML as a basis for the, for the document. So between 2005 uh, and uh, 2010, uh, it was the, 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 the years, we can call them the years of the standards because uh, uh, ODF was born in that time frame and also, of course, Office Open XML, which is uh, partially a standard, uh, but anyway. That, these were the years. So these were the years where there was also a lot of discussion about formats. And uh, it was uh, uh, probably the years where the office suite had the biggest chances of uh, growing. Uh, we all know that at the end in 2009, uh, Oracle acquired Sun. Uh, so of course, uh, we, we know the story of open office that unfortunately there was a kind of break in the evolution of the program because although we, uh, we, we started up this project, LibreOffice, but in front of the market, especially for people that doesn't know very well and doesn't understand the reality of open source, uh, uh, seeing a product disappear or uh, anyway, forking uh, is a concept that is not really known outside the open source environment or the technology environment. So, of course, we lost a little bit and if you remember, after 2010, people with the, with the growth of the online office suite, because Google Docs started more or less in that time frame, so they, they started to be in the market, and people were really excited. Of course, uh, Google and Microsoft uh, put millions of advertising, or even billions of advertising, behind the, the, the concept that everything should be in the cloud. And people started to say, uh, desktop productivity software is dead. 
which is not true. But the fact is that the uh, the market had a almost stopped. There was a decrease, uh, uh, an incredible decrease in the in the number of uh, product shipped between. Uh, 2010 and 2015. Then uh, uh, people realized that to do real productivity, you need the desktop. And then they started again uh, to adopt or to work with desktop product. So also if you look at the offering, for instance, for, from Microsoft, um, which is still the leading company by far in, the, in that market, uh, at first, they were offering only uh, Office 365, and now they still sell you Office 365, but you, you buy Office 365, but then you can download the desktop version. And which means that they still, they, they try to sell the, the, the cloud, but they know that people have to install it on, on the desktop. So, uh, the, in... Uh, in 2010, we announced LibreOffice. We know the story since 2010. So, Office Suite uh, uh, are mature products. They, I think, uh, I mean, I may, be, I may be wrong, but I think that they will exist uh, in, in some terms uh, almost forever. Um, because, uh, for instance, if you are traveling, uh, it's a lot more practical to have the, the, the software you know, on your machine than uh, being connected if you are on a plane, on a train. Uh, yes, there is Wi-Fi, but it's not always ideal. Uh, it's not all the connection is not always the, bad, the, good, the good one. Uh, think about large, very large countries, because in Euro Europe is small. So uh, if you look at the coverage of, uh, let's say, 4G, coverage in Italy is almost everywhere. But go to Brazil, go to Argentina, go even to the States, there are areas where the coverage is not, because basically there's no one living in some areas, so it doesn't make the point of bringing uh, uh, fast connectivity. So people will always, there will be people that will always use that on the desktop. Uh, and of course, uh, what happens now, it happens that, uh, with the, that there is a growing attention to digital sovereignty. And this is a huge opportunity for us because uh, uh, the behavior of Google, Microsoft, and uh, these companies uh, uh, as, as as is now people is perceiving that these companies are uh, profiling you or chasing you in some way. So even people that is not into technology starts to understand also because it's, if you have a little bit of salt in your mind, uh, uh, I mean, you look for uh, 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 an hotel in Milan because you're coming to the LibreOffice conference uh, and just out of the blue, you start receiving advertising about restaurants in Milan, shopping in Milan, how you can move around Milan, and so on and so forth. So even people that is not really into technology understand that there is a connection somewhere between these systems, because otherwise you, you have just made a research, uh, maybe bought a train ticket, and after today, they, they, you get a, the, 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 the advertising of a restaurant or a shopping center, which is not connected to a train ticket. So, uh, so this for us is a big opportunity. And of course, opportunities means that we can find ways of being sustainable, which means getting money at the end of the day. Uh, by leveraging the idea of, uh, uh, of digital or data or whatever sovereignty. Because uh, we can uh, guarantee to people that uh, we are not profiling them uh, even if uh, they use our the LibreOffice on uh, mobile or uh, uh, on cloud. Uh, because we don't have that interest. Our interest in is in growing and making a software product, we don't have a, a kind of, uh, uh, our 
our project is not an ecosystem of economies like Microsoft that is making money out of uh, out of the products, uh, service, advertising, uh, uh, and and everything. So, and the same now applies to Google, uh, and the same applies to Amazon, uh, and the same applies to Facebook, uh, but also to other companies that are not part of that uh, of the so-called big tech. In the same period, uh, we have uh, a huge growth of uh, the open source code uh, in general. It is more true or more visible on servers than on the desktop, but the reality is that even on the desktop, the number of uh, applications that are using an open source stack somewhere is increasing. And this is another opportunity for us because uh, we are open source. We are a free software project. And therefore, uh, and, and we, we have not invented ourselves today. So people is, cannot say, oh yes, you're open source because you're leveraging the opportunity. No, we are open source because be, we believe in free open source software for the last 20 years. And, and when we started, there was no interest at all in doing uh, free open source software. There was some interest, but not as big as today, because there are billions of companies living, uh, living with open source software. But so for us, for most of us, uh, many years have been as volunteers. For many of us, uh, we are we are ongoing volunteers. Uh, uh, I can tell you, for instance, the, the, at dinner the, the two days ago, uh, we, uh, people was asking me, but who pays all of this? I say, this is paid by a foundation, by a company, uh, but most of the people that are coming are doing this uh, because of a passion. People ask me, but why are you cooking for 80 people is not your uh, i say because this is fun i like it i like to be with my friends in an evening uh, and even if we exchange just 10 words we you know there is a non uh, a non set communication between us that says we care for each other because I'm sure that if I come to one of our, your countries, you will be as welcoming as we have tried to be. Because this is part of be our big community. To be really friends, uh, even if we meet uh, once a year, or maybe never. And we exchange our uh, opinions just by email. And in fact, uh, we, we, we should, uh, uh, the, the fact that LibreOffice uh, is important, uh, we should have some suspect, for instance, this was the last version of uh, the future of open source, then it became too commercial and it was abandoned. But just by asking people uh, which is your preferred open source project, and LibreOffice was one of the seven most voted. and we. That was totally unexpected at the time. And, uh, uh, and if you look at the other project, they're all server side because you have OpenStack, Docker, you have Drupal, Linux, of course, Ubuntu, and uh, ah. Postgres. Sorry. Thank you. You see, the, the age is, uh, is uh, starting to make its effects. And uh, the, 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 the year after, you know that there was uh, rumors that Ubuntu was going to replace the desktop uh, software with a, 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 an online suite. So they asked the users, which software do you want? And this was unexpected as well. So LibreOffice is the green one. So the answer was basically unanimous. Because if you have uh, more than, it was, I think, 78%. So 78% of Ubuntu users that, but it was uh, kind of uh, 5,000, 6,000 people. So a, a reasonable uh, number of, uh, of people. And uh, if you look at the other, uh, there is, th th there's no, no real comparison. You can say that the other numbers 
which are all less than 4%, were just by chance. You know, I don't want to write LibreOffice, so I, I cross on Google Docs, but it, when, when you have one product that is almost 80%, uh, you don't have, I mean, you, you don't even have to ask uh, if the champion, if the, 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 the numbers were good, because it's, it's almost no discussion. So, and this was surprising in a sense, but it shows the opportunity that we have. Because at least in the environment of, uh, let's say, technical users, power user, LibreOffice is uh, the de facto uh, office suite. This is four years ago. Let's say that it has changed, but you don't go down from 78 to, to 15. You may go down from 78 to 75 to 70, but it's, it's any, in any case, it's a, it's a huge percentage. I don't know, but let, let's assume that it's not up. Uh, let's try to be humble and, uh, in, in what we do. Uh, market revenues, these are analyst data. So these are real data from analysts. 2022, it's, the market is $27 billion. 2023, 28.4. And we get up in 2025 at 31 plus. OK. And this. Uh, is the trend, uh, the growing trend. Uh, uh, as you see, during the 2020, was down, and then it's up. It's growing 5% per year, which is also an opportunity. There are new people installing. Of course, population is growing. People are adopting. Younger people are adopting PCs. There, are, there, are, there is a growing number of users. This is Office Suite in general. And the value is not the commercial value because they, uh, if you look at the, 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 there is open source inside as well. So of course the commercial value is not exactly the same. This is what the uh, analysts call uh, addressable market. So the market, the potential market, and, uh, and uh, what is astonishing is that they give us 9% of this addressable market. So are we, are we producing 2.5 billions of revenues? I don't think so. If we had 2.5 billions of revenues, probably would, would be uh, I don't know, in Copacabana, renting a kind of a tent in, uh, in Copacabana and renting the old Copacabana beach for a week uh, because we have enough money. <laughs> no, I, of course, joking. We have to be careful in how we spend our money because we, anyway, we are a, a charity. But... Uh, so this means that we have a huge opportunity in front of us. Uh, it's not easy, because uh, if you think, uh, let's of course take Microsoft as an example. Microsoft is the result of 40 years of right investment in the right direction. Then we can say that Microsoft is, is evil as a company, but if you look at the story, they have started to invest in some direction 10 years before the other companies. And they, after 10 years, you, you, people say, oh, now I understand why they were doing this. But the fact is that only Bill Gates has in his group had the vision of investing in some direction. Then they did it wrong with internet, but of course, when you are such a big company, you can make some mistakes in some areas but you, if you do it correctly in, in another one. And if you remember, one of the mantras of Bill Gates was uh, the user will never be able to look into our documents. This is written into, I think, at least 100 emails, 100 Bill Gates emails. So 
the user will never be able to look into our documents. And he wrote it after Office Open XML was approved. Not, on, not only before, but even after the, the, the so-called standard was approved. So uh, we, can, we, don't, we cannot do the same thing that Microsoft has done, of course. It's impossible in some cases. Uh, I would be against uh, doing uh, huge lobbying efforts and spending in uh, lob let, let's say questionable lobbying uh, amounts uh, in some areas uh, while uh, doing uh, monitoring is a is a perfect I, I would support doing TDF doing uh, monitoring I wouldn't support TDF doing the lobbying uh, that is done in uh, in several environments so uh, how how much are the product used open source uh, this uh, is uh, 2017 but my friend tells me that the percentage is uh, fi the, that 16 is now 15 and of course it's not just libreoffice this is open source so you have more than libreoffice so currently using open source is 15% of users. The fact is that today, and these are global users, so it's 3 billion users. The problem is that today, only a percentage of the users is using only one office suite. Most of them are using two office suite. Um, sometimes one in the cloud and one on the desktop, sometimes the same in the desktop and the cloud, different ones. It, it depends from the work they're doing, the, the convenience, uh, what they, the fa this is a fact. This is now a, a fact for everyone. But we can be one of the two. So we don't want to be the one. Let's say that we want to be one of the two office suites that are used. And uh, if we are 15%, you have 80% uh, opportunity of growing. Because these are the people that basically do not know open source. So we can do a lot to be there and uh, we have to do it together as a project and therefore we have to do it as a foundation ecosystem our friends because this is the only way where we can uh, inform the market of the opportunity because of course we cannot force anyone to use libreoffice but we can inform the market of the opportunity of using libreoffice and of using it in a correct way so to adopt it for free if they deserve to have it for free and to pay some money if they have to pay some money because they need it in a, in a certain way. Size of the companies. We are, uh, these are the percentage, but you see we have a bigger opportunity. The smaller the company or the, let's say the mid-sized the company, the bigger is the opportunity for us. Large companies, uh, of course, uh, have more difficulties. We all know that migrating 100,000 desktops is not a trivial task. So, of course, uh, if you have 100,000 desktops, you probably think it about not 100,000 times about migrating, but you think a lot about migrating. If you are smaller, it's easier to make the change. So I'm not saying that we have to ignore the large companies because in any case there is a 12% that may be 10% today, but anyway, is by far more than we know. By far more than we know. But we can uh, tell them, uh, guys, we have, we have certified people that can help you. We have companies that can sell you a product that is 
done for your needs, can we sit around the table and discuss your opportunity? Never talk about the problem. The opportunity of moving to LibreOffice. And I think we have to work, uh, of course, uh, TDF as a charity cannot be a, a sales agent for ecosystem companies, of course. But we can uh, chase the opportunities and then address the opportunities with the best mix of competencies that we have in the project. And I think that we have to start, and this is my opinion, so you can blame me as much as you want, but this is my opinion, we have to start thinking more really as an entity with, that can address different markets and therefore work together and uh, work in a way that allows us to grow the LibreOffice share in the market. Because that is the only way that I see going forward. Because if we continue to think, uh, no, this is not my business, uh, then the problem is that too many people think that it's not our business and therefore we miss the opportunities. I will tell you a little bit more about, and sorry for being long, but I think it's important. At least I think it's important, then blame me if uh, you don't think it's important. But I will tell you a little bit more about the history of the Italian Ministry of Defense, which I think uh, is really a nice history or on how it should be managed. Then it can be managed 10 times as better, but at least it gave results. And this uh, is, uh, is interesting. Uh, of course, uh, these are public. Uh, I, I will share them, uh, use them, because uh, I think that gives us uh, some insights. Look at where the blue, you know, the dark blue is. Quality of customer support. We have to work here, guys. We have to work. Not that we have to, because the, the first answer is, okay, we hire 100 people. No. Because this is perception. If you are down here, means that the perception is, is bad. Not the reality, because probably they, people think, uh, you know, that there's basically no support. Let's improve it. For instance, we have never thought about sending uh, uh, automatic replies to user list. We send an automatic reply to the uh, download list, uh, which is suboptimal. We should probably look, improve it. Because I've seen, uh, I've had exchanges with some users that said, your first reply is a little bit misleading, so let's work at it. But for instance, at user mailing list, uh, why don't you get an automatic reply that says, it has been received, but there are volunteers working on it, so don't expect uh, an answer in two hours. But if you don't get an answer in uh, five days, please resend your message, because uh, we all have a job uh, and we may have missed your message. Let's think about this kind of uh, just care of the user, which is not doing anything wrong to people. We are not telling them that we profile them uh, by R coding all their data and somewhere, but let's see if we can improve this. We have Telegram groups. Uh, we do a good job on Telegram groups in some areas, but I think we could probably could do a better job. Uh, we have discourse. And discourse, there is a large amount of questions. In some cases, the questions uh, maybe deserve an answer earlier, but of course, if you don't have people looking at that, it's a problem. So even on discourse, uh, we should maybe make, make it clear that most of the answers are provided by volunteers, and therefore people cannot, because that is the perception, customer support. If you look at it, I, I would expect ease of, ease of setup to be lower, because if you look at the, at 
image that we get is oh, LibreOffice is, is, is a, a nightmare to install. Yes, of course, it's a small number of people that says this. But our installation process uh, is less straightforward than other office suites. This for sure. So we, we, we can either improve the installation process or make people aware that the installation process is a little bit more tedious than the other ones, but it's also a free software. So we, we want to assure you that all the details are processed in, a core, in, in, in the right way. And uh, I'm, I'm not going, of course, cost effectiveness, but that was trivial to in. Easy to manage, built for professionalism. We have to improve this. I mean, LibreOffice is as professional as any other office suite. Why should, why does to be there? And, and you see the gap with Microsoft Office. It's not true. So let's, uh, Let's use this uh, and think how we can improve uh, or send, us, send up the blue dots in the different areas. We have never really used security as a marketing tool and I agree that we shouldn't do, but maybe making uh, more visible the security process that we, we, we apply to the, to the software I mean, I, I'm sure that if I talk to Kaolan in front of the ocean uh, uh, in, at night in front of the fire for, uh, uh, and I, he will give me information on the, secu on the security process uh, that if we transform in a short text, will communicate a lot to users. Because uh, I'm sure that you are doing a lot more than what is visible outside because what is visible are the patches, the C CVS, and that is visible because it's communicated. But I'm sure that we do a lot more than that. And therefore, we should be better at making people aware of the, all of this. And this is the last one. So these are the most important attributes when considering office productivity. So reliable, user-friendly, secure are the first three and built for professionalism is the, is the fourth. So we are not doing terribly well in these four, hour, four areas, and we should improve. Let's do some more focused thinking, some more focused communication all together, because I think this is useful not only for the LibreOffice community, but it's also useful for uh, Collabora and Allotropia for their uh, versions. They're free to ignore, of course, but I think it's important because the, the attributes are the same for all the software that is based on LibreOffice. So we should really uh, work better together in our marketing uh, to have a, a, a message that is uh, really coherent between the different companies. And uh, I think uh, I'll task myself and Mike to work more on this because I think it's, a, it's an opportunity, work better together, uh, work on some messages, on some tools together because that is an opportunity for all of us. And now, sorry for being, but I think, uh, I hope you find it interesting. It's uh, something that can help us. So we know our project model, so I will not, but basically, when we started, we said we, it's a free office, uh, free office suite, so free software. But we don't want to have a one company that is leading everything. On the, the, so we try to have a community and an ecosystem of companies. Uh, we have a we, we should grow the ecosystem, of course. Uh, but uh, let I think let's be clear: if we don't grow the addressable market it's difficult that the ecosystem will grow. Because uh, growing the ecosystem without growing the addressable market means that the current companies will make less money. And uh, I don't think this is what we want. I think we want them to be as successful as they can 
and then add other companies that are successful. So this means that we have to grow the addressable market. We have to, sorry, sell more LibreOffice. All together, again, of course, with, the, with respect for the uh, reciprocal uh, tasks, uh, responsibilities, but all together, we have to increase, grow the market that we are addressing. Otherwise, there's no way that we can, uh, it, it all stays theoretical. You know, the, the, the exercise that we did the, the other day with Uwe, there was uh, grow the ecosystem, which was rather important. But grow the ecosystem means grow the project, because otherwise, we, each one of us will have, I will have to slim down 40 kilos instead of 25, and uh, uh, each one has to eat a lot less than, uh, because there, w there won't be money for everyone, and this is not what we want, and sorry to stress the money, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a greedy person, but at the end of the month, I have to pay the bills like anyone else. So we need to, 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 to allow people to pay their bills and to have fun and to grow the project and to do all the nice stuff that we are doing, but we can do before better. So who are the stakeholders? Here, let's be clear also on this. We are stakeholders, of course. Community members, we, we have an incredible connection with the project. So, of course, uh, let's say we, we are not the ideal people to look at the project because we are so much into the project that our vision is not, is not abstract enough from the project. But let, I've, I've tried to be to, to be, to look at the project like uh, from outside, but it's difficult. And then we have users. Users have no personal involvement. They don't even, most of them, they don't even pay for the software. And when you don't pay for, for something, uh, your, you know, your ties are almost nothing. So we have to create first an emotional tie with the product we have to make the user more proud of being LibreOffice users. And uh, the problem is that we are in a market where there are commodities. So the, the value of the product is, in general, small. is perceived as a small value. Open source sustainability. This... Uh, is uh, something where there is a large discussion. Not every day, but every now and then there, is, there are people that come out with very interesting uh, documents. Um, especially, so Artbleed was a turning point and we, we all agree on that, but let's focus on the last two. So in 2016, Nadia Egbal, uh, she's a researcher, was uh, funded by the Ford Foundation in the States to make a research uh, following the heart bleed uh, bug. And uh, it's, it's basically it's a research by paper, but, but it's a book. It's over 160 pages. It's Roads and Bridges, the unseen lab labor behind our digital infrastructure. You can download it free from the internet, but if you send me an email, I already have the PDF, so I'm happy to, to share the PDF. Second one, in 2019, Dries, and I will go a little bit over Dries' uh, words, uh, um, has written this post, uh, which is basically a long one, Balancing makers and takers to scale and sustain open source. This is extremely interesting. Dries has done a hell of a job in looking at the, at the problem under different point of view. Dries Buitert, if you don't know him, is the guy that developed Drupal and then created Acuya. Acuya is the value-added, one of the value-added, the biggest one, value-added company on Drupal. So he's a brilliant developer. He lives in Belgium, I think. Uh, 
he is very friendly, um, but he, he did a very good job uh, in studying the project. So I will uh, steal uh, Dries' words uh, because I think he has really uh, got the, the core of the, the issue. So small uh, communities can rely on volunteers, but as the project grow, you need, uh, you see, you know, the, the governance needs to be reformed so the project can be maintained more easily. So three models, self-governance, privatization, and centralization. So of course, uh, I think uh, the, 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 the problem is uh, uh, pri privatization, uh, okay, is a choice, that it's not open source anymore. Uh, so if uh, we go to self-governance or centralization, the, the, the reality is that uh, uh, what Dries suggests is to improve self-governance to the next level, which is a challenge, but it happens. It may happen. Just to make it clear the process that Dries makes this example, so the roads were created by volunteers because uh, in the old days uh, uh, you, you have to reach the other village and you create the road. Then they are improved by businesses. You can make, uh, once upon a time, uh, you, you, you were paying taxes to go on the roads. So of course the business had an interest. And then the infrastructure at the end uh, is managed by the government, so you go to centralization. Of course, the project can be similar, but if you want to maintain open source, you cannot, you, you, you may have, you, you need to have a different privatization concept. So, uh, he, he writes uh, and says, first, uh, he, 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 there is a caveat, says, he, I understand that my, my opinions may not be shared by everyone, but again, I think they are really interesting. Uh, let's be very, my, my personal idea, but I think uh, if, if we think uh, really about the issue, the problem, uh, we cannot have projects of the size of LibreOffice if there isn't some money associated somewhere. And that can, cannot just be donation money because we, we, the, our reach uh, is far beyond uh, the level of the uh, money that we get with donations. There's no way. I mean, it's uh, uh, either we stop the project, we reduce the project, but our project has a global reach. And when you have global reach, uh, it would be fantastic to run the project as a group of friends, but guys, uh, there are 160 countries in the world uh, and having a group of 160 friends uh, that meet every week uh, in face to face is impossible. There are language issues, we all know the issues that we have, so we need some uh, professionalism that I think we are already a applying to the, to the project, but we need also the money to in, improve the professionalism to the next level. Otherwise, uh, some of the challenges that we have, and most of the, these challenges we are aware, we will never be able to, to reach the objective. So he, he told us a little bit uh, uh, about this, uh, and, and of course says, I'm not saying that every community has to change the model, but of course uh, uh, there is a point where you have to think seriously about the model. And then he makes uh, the, what I think is a really interesting, important definition. He, he, he makes a, a distinction between makers and takers. So makers are the companies that are born of course, the, the open source project, but also the company that are born out of open source. So they develop open source software and usually they invest a large chunk 
he considered that by default 50%, maybe may not be 50%, but of course he has to give up an estimation. So he says they invest 50% of their, of their money in uh, improving open source. Then of course with the other 50% they make business, uh, they, make, they make money as it is normal for companies. Uh, and then there are the takers. The takers are the people that use or leverage open source, do a little bit, and then take all the rest. And he says, this is 10 and 90. So they invest 10% on open source and they take 90% out of open source. Uh, I've thought a little bit, uh, I've, I've talked, uh, I had a couple of uh, discussion with uh, Dries. We, we had a, a couple of calls. Uh, I, uh, he, he convinced me to, to take his numbers as good. So let's say that makers are 50-50, takers are 10 and 90. Then uh, we can discuss for days if it's uh, a different percentage. So the difference between makers and takers is not always clear because uh, in some cases a taker can seem a good citizen of the, uh, the, the, the open source environment. The reality is that he's not a really good citizen. But the difference uh, he says, as a rule of thumb, of thumb, makers invest in growing the company and open source, and takers are uh, growing the business and let the other take care of the open source part, which I think uh, is basically okay. And therefore, and that's the final one, and uh, this uh, is how makers can defend from takers. Because, of course, uh, if you invest 90%, you, you will have an unfair advantage of a company that is in the same market and invests 50%, because you invest 40% more. So he says the only way that makers can uh, defend them is by... Uh, one of the choices, of course, uh, is, the, is what several projects have done. They've changed their license. So they uh, went away from open source, like Elastic, like others. And therefore, th that way, you reduce the possibility of leveraging the software by takers. But if you want to stay open source, the only way is uh, to improve uh, the quality of the project. This is uh, not written here. But is the if you read and again uh, you can download the Dries uh, um, uh, blog. Uh, but if you want it, I have a P I've made a PDF out of it, so I can send you the PDF. Uh, the, the 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 conclusion that he says is that only by growing the project as a as an entity, makers can defend from takers. Otherwise the end uh, will always be this one. So this is maker and these are takers. So if you see the visual representation of what 50-50 against 10 to 90 means, uh, you, you don't have any doubt. This one, uh, if that one uh, doesn't work uh, together with the project, so it doesn't work together with all the other members of the project ecosystem and with the, with the volunteers with the project and work together, this will crunch us. There's no way of doing it other way. I mean, it's, this is bean counting, uh, pure bean counting. You invest more, you do more advertising, you do more of whatever. So I think uh, that this, uh, at LibreOffice, this, we, we don't have any other choice. I mean, if we want to stay open source, if we don't want to change our license, uh, this is the only solution that we have, is to continue to have ecosystem company investing 50-50, uh, and us, 
as let's say I put myself on the side of volunteers at, in this, at this moment, as uh, work together with the companies to make their investment in open source as effective uh, as uh, this. Theory, of course, but if we don't work together, this will stay, will not grow in terms of, uh, you know, it will not, we, we don't, we will not, never grow the cloud around this 50%. We will never grow the perception around this 50% that, yes, that is the 50% that they're putting on their product, but be, behind them, there is a community that is helping them. And we can find ways just to make an example, examples. Of course, if you change, in this case, you change the license, okay? If we, you don't change the license, that means, uh, and let's make the names. Uh, let's say that Allotropia develops a feature that, and, and put into the, the, this, the, the basket of the open source, let, the, the LibreOffice basket of open source. This feature will improve Collabora's product and vice versa. Collabora's feature will allow a lot of, basically, they will, uh, uh, let's say, they, they will support their, uh, the, their competition by uh, giving features to others, and we volunteers, we give features to them, and they give features to us. So only if we maintain this, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a positive spiral that grows, because then that hopefully there will be another uh, another ecosystem company that allows them, gives them uh, uh, um, features to add to their products, and they back can be can be um, uh, can build off on those features, and we can together have a better product for a better free soft free software product and a better free software product for the businesses which means that they will have to contribute back in some way back to the pro to the project by becoming another ecosystem members by buying uh, solutions by um, buying uh, uh, development ways can be different but this i think is the only way then uh, you know you know where, I, where no you don't know where where I live but I can give you my address it's not a problem uh, uh, if you want to blame me do it but I really try to to think a lot about this uh, because I think uh, that if we don't uh, improve uh, as a group that way we are losing our time Mike you have a question Hmm, slide to uh, non companies because here you discuss a uh, company uh, that is maker uh, versus company that is taker but I want to also say that uh, the community is not uh, does not consist only of companies and when you extend it there are makers who are volunteers and takers who are users I'm sorry so I wanted to say that too much focus on doing everything for users, not in any uh, way, but we should balance uh, here to not forget that this uh, same uh, picture may apply there too. So uh, I, uh, I totally, understand why we should uh, grow the user base and so on but uh, I also think that Uwe's idea that uh, our uh, audience should as a project should be more focused on contributors to be contributors should be not uh, uh, compromised uh, to not uh, beca become 
uh, detrimental to makers. But what I was saying is that we have to grow the project, so we have to grow contributors as well. Uh, I'm, at the moment, I'm focusing on the, let's say, the economics. But of course, we, uh, I, I started before that we have to grow the ecosystem, which means grow volunteers and grow companies and grow contributors anyway. But I'm trying to focus on the economics because I think uh, this is a key part. If we don't sort out the economy, then uh, it's, uh, it's a risk for everyone. Said, let us improve uh, the uh, quality of uh, user uh, support on uh, a previous slide. But Uh, yeah, well, I said customer, yeah. Well, uh, the uh, qu questionnaire was run against uh, customers of what? I'm sorry. Maybe I uh, mistook the sl previous slide, but uh, there was uh, a graph uh, that talk told about perception between uh, perception of who who are those uh, uh, respondents? Who are respondents of this? Uh, this is done by analysts, they will never tell you who are the... It's a, it's a, this was done by Spiceworks for uh, Gartner and IDC. I just, w I just claim that this is not customer support uh, in some uh, very specific uh, sense. I, I would claim that this means user support in this case. If I may add something, it is really, really important that you realize this is the picture the people have of us. us. This is not the reality. Believe me, I had a really nice access experience of having to install a Microsoft Office license 364 locally on a PC of a customer. I tell you, in the time this needed, I could have installed about four or five Libra offices with no problems. So the ease of install is, is a fiction, but the, this is the perception of the people out there. This is not the reality, this is the perception. And this is about customers, not about users. Look where, um, look where Microsoft Office here in customer support. We all know that it's lousy. And it's just because the name is Microsoft, they, the perception is that is is okay. Okay, um, come a little bit of. Uh, uh, there was Eyal, sorry. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, apart from this, uh, uh, make a take a discussion, which is uh, an important discussion uh, with its consequences, but you can do it in, in days, <laughs> I think. Um, you know, 90%, I'm, I'm pretty right with you with two things <laughs> I want to, to disagree, so I, I uh, uh, point this out. The concept of lobbying in this uh, uh, area, I think uh, we have to um, rethink. Lobbying is per se not a bad thing. It's the way you are doing lobbying. You know, I'm doing a lot of my time in doing uh, even no, even I'm, even I'm a registered even Italian PR professional. Even, so even in Germany, lobby the, the 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 thing lobbying have a really bad uh, thing. And when we do lobbying in the way we understand it, trustworthy, then we get a lot of answers saying. Yes, I want to talk to you because I know that you are trustworthy. So, don't uh, um, disqualify the 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 the, uh, the thing lobbying itself. We should disqualify uh, how it is done by others with corruption and, and, and so. Absolutely, on. but I, I said that 
you, you can have lobby, which is the, the monitoring part and the informing part, which is absolutely correct. The problem is that what is what is behind. Yeah. I mean, I can spend hours talking about lobby companies in Italy. We belong to the same association. I'm a member of FERPI, which is the Italian Association of PR Professional. And uh, there is people that in the same time that I've been uh, a member, which is almost 40 years, have uh, kind of uh, 10 to 20 claims to the probiviri per year. So, because they for bad behavior. And people has been thrown from the, out of the association because uh, they were, uh, they, they got to a level where they caught a person with a briefcase with a all uh, uh, 50 euro cut in half. And he said, but it's normal. I don't trust to, be, to bring all the 50 euros with me, of course. This is not the lobby that we want to do. Yes, but a good lobby. Uh, so <laughs> exactly. and I want to, to motivate to do more lobbying. Sure, let, there's let Paolo give, there. A, a second uh, uh, idea I got out of, or a second uh, few out of my lobbying uh, uh, work. Um, there's also this, this under, um, uh, uh, this, this point out this is very important because lobbying gets its results now with the ideas of uh, digital sovereignty. But there's also a risk if we are doing not this what you are mentioned, there's a window of opportunity. And, in, and, and we have to handle expectations. Expectations are, okay, if I want to change to migrate to LibreOffice with, uh, uh, with the government, I need a thousand consultants to do that. So where are the thousand consultants? And uh, we have to, to uh, manage these expectations and see that this uh, window of opportunity will sometimes close and it will backfire to us and then this will happen. Yeah. Oh, then. So uh, I want to push back against uh, not necessarily your conclusions, but some of your assumptions or assertions. Um, first is, is uh, what the meaning of sustainability for a software project is. Um, and I would say that uh, income or flow of money is not the essence of sustainability. It is, an, it is secondary and the, the, the most important or the core measure of sustainability of the, of the project is, the, uh, is time spent by developers maintaining and updating and expanding it. And uh, of, of course, it's, it's beyond a certain size of a project and complexity, there is need for money and other like economic resources to make that happen, but it's the it's the wrong it's the wrong core measure I would say, uh, which also um, uh, kind of uh, echoes what uh, what Mike was saying, and um, and that that's one point. A second point is the is is the the partial assumption that that work on software um, uh, goes in, in the way of, of forming uh, for-profit companies and that or even that that uh, office productivity is um, is uh, is should be conceived as a market so usage of software is not a market um, uh, if anything our our goal or part of our goal should be to destroy the, the market of software productivity to make it so that those thirty billion dollars or whatever um, uh, disappear and are replaced by say ten percent five percent of that or whatever uh, the amount that is necessary to uh, which is not paid for software or mostly not paid for software but somehow indirectly goes into uh, supporting uh, free software that 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 caters to these needs just like there isn't a, a market for browsers people don't pay for um, uh, web browsers although a lot of resources do go into making and and, and updating browsers I would say more but that's enough for well, a comment thanks well uh, I think Lothar already said uh, some part of what I wanted to say in regards to, uh, uh, to lobbying. Uh, in, in a way, I'm doing a bit of that uh, uh, in, uh, 
in uh, in Luxembourg, in Luxembourg, well, in the in the good way, actually trying to promote uh, open source in general and actually liberal office in uh, in various in uh, institutions, uh, and that I think is something that we should actually do more so do the good lobbying uh, going there and actually show them that there is a, uh, a community there are alternatives viable alternatives because for years i've been talking with the european institution even the european commission and say well you know there's no way out of microsoft office is too complicated and things like that and that is you know as you say in technical terms bullshit uh, but they naturally need to see uh, the community that, uh, out there they need to see uh, so the opportunity of engaging with consultants that allow them to uh, to to make this migration so you know in that in that sense being able to form more consultants more professionals that are able to to engage in these activities are uh, what well, is quite important then uh, uh, there are so additional studies that probably Italy you could put in uh, in that list in terms of uh, uh, open source funding uh, there is a research to which I, I participated uh, in 2021, so last year, it's been published just recently, uh, in funding uh, mechanism to fund open source projects, even from the base, even from very small groups, and then, and then going up. So there's a lot be, being done from that point of view, and we should be there, present. So maybe invest time for Italo to be present in Brussels, uh, me in Luxembourg, and then exchange information to, to, to make sure that the, the European Commission actually sees us out there. Because if we are not seeing, seeing there, we, are, we don't exist. So that means that the only one that exists is Microsoft, in a, in a way. Uh, you know, and just one, one comment in, in terms of uh, growing uh, the, uh, the, the project, uh, in a way. I always uh, thought that you know, we, we, we have to be seen, we matter because we have a certain number of users. So for, for us, the users are an asset. So if we have, you know, 10 users, we don't matter. If we have 100 mi uh, million, well, it's already something. But if we start getting 500 million users out there, I mean, we are powerful. So then at that point, we can even go out and get uh, even more money, for example, European investments and things like that. And that number is what allows us to uh, to expand the ecosystem. If the users are not there, companies cannot go there to make the migrations. That's it. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted very quickly to, well, say I love the presentation, but beyond that, I think the uh, browser model of a totally demonetized um, paradise ignores the very serious privacy problems that underpin the whole browser ecosystem and that fund all browsers, pretty much. So, so like, you know, it's all very well saying that Firefox is this wonderful independent project, but we know that Google props them up massively because the default, which is critically important, is to give all your data to Google. So you're basically, it is a privacy-funded ecosystem, and I don't think, th and the desktop model is so radically different that we need to find, I mean, there are no giant search monopolies to pay us money to sell privacy, y if you see what I mean. That was the first thing. The second thing is, I just want to agree with Paolo briefly, uh, just, just, why not? I know, I know, yes, refreshing, hey? Um, so I think there is, there is one source of economic uh, advantage that TDF has, which is its users, and I don't know that we exploit that as well as we could. There are many sort of partnerships we could make with other companies. Uh, you know, I think of the Grammarly's of the world, although they're proprietary, but there's the language toolers of the world, and there are people that print things and so on that we could work with to, to exploit that user base to, to make money. And I think there are, there are obvious business tie-ups that without sacrificing our charitable status or ethos uh, that, we, that we could make uh, to, to grow investment in TDF. So, thanks. So let's uh, go to the end. Uh, I've already mentioned this. Uh, this uh, is not the right answer to 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 make uh, uh, open source sustainable. So this is what we did when uh, we uh, we we started. Uh, I think uh, now we have to relaunch our own relaunch of innovation. After ten years, twelve years, I think we uh, we we should. Uh, probably restart uh, with the same enthusiasm we, we had in, uh, in 2010, uh, uh, which is not easy, 
but we should try to uh, restart and being enthusiastic about the software. I don't think we are as enthusiastic as we were in 2010. Uh, objectives. You know the objective is to be the best free open source office suite. Uh, use the leverage, leverage the LibreOffice, which is now an, an umbrella brand. LibreOffice uh, with the concept of LibreOffice technology is an umbrella brand because uh, there is the, the, you know, the, the transactional engine, all this is LibreOffice. So most of what we do is based on the LibreOffice technology and LibreOffice is uh, the main uh, product based on the LibreOffice technology. So I think we have to make it clear and uh, we have to invest more on the LibreOffice technology because I think uh, that this makes us different from the other uh, office suite in general. The next 10 years, uh, leverage the LibreOffice technology. Uh, change the perception that we are a software vendor. Um, probably, I think we have, uh, it's now time to develop uh, something which is more uh, visually distinctive for TDF uh, than uh, being just a tagline on the, on the LibreOffice logo. So I have a TDF logo which is independent from the LibreOffice logo and then we, we leave the tagline under, under LibreOffice because that of course is uh, our flagship uh, technology and product but I think uh, we have to go to the next step. You know the LibreOffice technology uh, but in general I think that this uh, is uh, what we should start because I I've used this uh, in many environments, so with technical people and with non-technical people. And I can tell you that the non-technical people that of course do not, you know, the difference is that the technical people starts to look at the symbols. So it's a word processing engine, uh, UE, DOCX, uh, so the technical guy focus on the definitions. The non-technical guy looks at the, so the, 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 uh, the next question from the non-technical guy is, uh, does it mean that if I use it on the web and uh, on the desktop is exactly the same? And the answer is yes. Because I know that it's not the same for Microsoft Office. They are different. So they already catch the other because they have issues in transferring files from one version to the other. So they show in this, uh, it's a very visual, uh, transferring a visual perception. And of course you have to be in front of them, but learn how to use it. Because this for non-technical people, it's really easy to catch. So start using, uh, and, and if you think that this is not enough, uh, write Italo, you should, go, you should elaborate the next one and I'll try uh, to, to, to light up my own fire on my place, not go to Kaolan this time. Uh, and uh, at night with the druids that assist me, uh, find the next, uh, the next marketing uh, gimmick uh, for the project. But let's challenge each other. I have to make a presentation in 10 days to seven years old guy, can you help me? Yes, I can try to help you, then maybe I'm not good enough. But let's uh, work uh, together. If someone asks me, uh, uh, I need uh, to make a technical presentation, I, I want a technical presentation on LibreOffice, I will never prepare the slide. I will probably call uh, some, some developer and say, do you have slides to lend me because I'm, I don't have the technical slides. So let's work together, all together, developers. And if you have the doubt that what I say is uh, not correct, uh, let's talk. Because I, don't, I can ensure you that I don't invent anything. 
of course, I elaborate and I create stories on what you do. And stories are, stories are stories. So stories are not code. There, there are no object and classes in a story. There are humans and stuff and people. And, and uh, by the way, I don't know what an object is and a class is. So this is just a monkey repeating uh, the, the terms that I uh, hear from uh, developers. So let's make uh, this happen. So these are our current users. Of course, it's not precise, but let's say that this reflects more or less the reality. Let's make them uh, the ideal ones. So individual, small business, mainly support with donation. A few free riders, we cannot avoid them. But the majority of universities, enterprises, governments, and whatever, have to give us some money, some contribution, and uh, educate. We have to educate them. So I, I, make it, I, I give you a few, a, a small story about the uh, Italian Ministry of Defense. When we, we, we did, uh, we, we trained them, we trained the trainers at the Ministry of Defense. So Libre Italia volunteers, a number of them trained the trainers. We had people from the Army, from the Navy, and from the, uh, the aviation. Um, and uh, at the end, uh, we trained the trainers, and uh, uh, so they started to deploy LibreOffice. And I ha for uh, six months, more or less, every night at 8 o'clock, uh, I could put uh, an alarm on it. Generale Sileo called me selling. Oh, we have a couple of, ish of bugs on LibreOffice. I said, okay, well, not just a gobble, we have more. You should solve them. Impossible. Why impossible? Because if we solve for free the two bucks to you, in uh, one year, you won't have LibreOffice at all. So do you prefer to pay for the two bucks or to pay for uh, 100,000 Microsoft licenses? Okay. Next, next evening. We have found another two bucks, okay, nice. And this for, and at the end what they did, uh, it's as you say, but do you have a solution? I say, yes, of course we have a solution. There are companies that sell a version and they can solve you the bugs. But this is not the Document Foundation because the Document Foundation is a charity. So at the end, they went to one of the ecosystem companies and uh, made a contract. I don't even know the numbers. So uh, for a number of, uh, uh, which I think in general is about between 30 and 40% of their desktops. It's less probably now. Okay. So I think that if every large organization of the world using LibreOffice gives us 40% uh, enterprise paid desktops and keeps 60%, which were the non-strategic. I, I told them, uh, just make an exercise. You have to make it. Which are the strategic desktops and which are the non-strategic? You have PCs where you write a letter every week. This is non-strategic. If you find a bug, uh, you will find a workaround. Uh, you know, there are, uh, the, 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 they have a huge amount of uh, locations, and there are locations where they have two PCs where they just print uh, reports at the end of the week. So if the report is not beautiful, it's a report anyway. So these are not strategic. So they are paying for around 40% of the numbers, and I, I think that if all the, the users paid for 40% of the numbers, we, we would already be in a different condition in terms of economy. So when people ask, uh, don't do the mistake uh, 
at least on our side, then companies have their own commercial strategies and I don't want to discuss them. But don't say, oh, you have to pay 100,000 desktop. Let's discuss on which is the best solution for uh, your problem. You have a problem, you have numbers, I can put you in touch with the right people to solve your problem. But be, uh, let's say, we, we have uh, to be a little bit creative. Of course, Microsoft answer would be either you buy 100,000 or nothing. We, uh, we have the luxury of having different answers. So use the luxury of having different answers. So communicate. And this should be a responsibility of everyone. We are not selling. We are just saying, if you deploy the community version today, in 10 years, you may not have a free office suite which fits your needs. Because we are not able to sustain anymore the growth of a software that is professional, secure, and so on and so forth. So I think, uh, and, and we are, if you say this, uh, you are not selling anything. So if you are a, a not-for-profit, you are not risking anything. If you just say, it's a re the reality. I mean, people that invested, the Regione Emilia-Romagna, that in, in 2012, because of some idiots in the Italian community, invested in Apache Open Office, has no product today to deploy. So, and uh, as, uh, of course, uh, a big failure like this, uh, they are going back to Microsoft Office, of course. They are not going a second time to, to open source. But this is exactly what has happened at Regione Emilia Romagna. Choose the wrong project, the project is going, is fading away. You don't have a product after 10 years. Today, Apache Open Office is unusable at professional level. And let's work together. It's difficult. It's terribly difficult. I know that is terribly difficult. But let's say that we, we find a way of uh, mentioning people and customers or uh, uh, friends uh, Let's leverage that. And this, we have to leverage that as a group uh, because, of course, uh, uh, no one of us can know everyone. So uh, that, this is uh, the end. Uh, sorry for being a little bit long, but I think uh, it was something that we had to discuss uh, in, the, in, a, in a very open and frank way because uh, we have to make uh, this concept clear. Sustainability uh, and uh, yeah, you can put it first or second, the economics, but if we don't have enough money, we don't have a project that's of this size. Then of course, if the project is a small utility that is maintained by one person, that is a different story. That can happen. But we, we have 120 languages. How the hell a product with 120 language version of the software can live without having the money to support uh, the reach of the 120 community that we are reaching? It's, uh, let's just use a little bit of common sense in this. We want to be part of a global project. We need uh, to have the economics that keeps a, log a global project alive. Otherwise, we all are around uh, a small project that was op open office in 2002, where it was just a small group of people supporting the project, and the project grew. So if we want really to support LibreOffice, we have the numbers. We can say, unfortunately, we are too big, but we are too big. We have to keep and grow and become better. And anyway, I will fight for us to grow until I will be part of the project. 
so I will fight in this direction. Candy. Hello, hello. So uh, just for clarification, if you can tell, like uh, when you say that we need more money, uh, do you mean we as TDF or do you mean the entire ecosystem plus TDF? Uh, as, a, as a project, as a project. So everyone, ecosystem, com as I, I said, uh, we have to in grow the, the addressable market because the addressable market means more money for the ecosystem means, of course, more money for TDF, probably more donations, more... Uh, it's the only way. It's not just TDF. No, it's the, I'm talking about a project, the, the global project, not just a, a portion of the project. We, I, I don't think we can... Uh, I mean, it's not silos. We, we, we all know that we, as, as much as we are uh, at the same time volunteers and paid and... Uh, we, we cannot have a silos where we say this money is there, this money is here. Either we grow the cloud around uh, the project or uh, it, it's not going to work. Even if the ecosystem grows too much and the community doesn't grow. Because at that point the ecosystem will be, uh, let's say, mm, eating the community and we are back at the time of sun uh, taking uh, the decisions, every one and so on. So, uh, you know, either we grow together or uh, I don't see a real nice future. Sorry for speaking too much again, but. Yeah, I have a question, tricky one. Uh, what is the role of uh, ODF in the, uh, the future of uh, the project? I think uh, uh, you know that I'm passionate about ODF, so uh, I think uh, this is one of our assets. This is part of the design about uh, digital sovereignty uh, because uh, the users are total control over the file. Uh, of course, uh, not a total technical control, but for instance, I've helped several people to recover their ODF files by unzipping them and sending them back the XML and telling them uh, you, you now have the main components but I'm sure that you are able to rebuild the file easily. And we all know that if you do this with Office Open XML, apart from developers, it's going to be impossible because the, the text is fractioned and uh, in, in a way that is not user may be technically perfect, but is not user uh, accessible. So it's, uh, I think it's, it's, important, it's an important part. Also because uh, on one side, it is uh, in this sense, uh, in this case, uh, it's European. So it has different origin from the usual source of uh, old technology. And uh, uh, it's really, standard under every point of view. I mean, again, talking about quality of standard and not quality of formats. I think that we have to invest on the quality of the standard, not the quality of the format, because the quality of the format, you can have uh, discussions, me with Regina for probably for two, two, two years in a row without uh, stopping up a minute. Uh, but while on the quality of the, the standard, uh, there's no there's no, there's no discussion. And of course, but we have to pursue interoperability, of course. That is uh, also a key, a key need. To add, uh, to add on this, um, if you ask someone uh, to open a, a, a file 20 years old with a doc format, I think no one expects it to be open properly in, in Word. But uh, thinking about ODF, I could imagine that everyone thinks it is a proper format even after 20 years. At the same time, we fail to uh, 
brings this into some um, um, perception of re reliability, as you showed in the picture, which is, of course, result how and who you ask uh, what people think about um, the products. And it was not a question about LibreOffice, it was open source, uh, productivity software in general. Um, but I think we need to marketing this aspect better if we trust the numbers. Uh, by the way, in this specific point, uh, security companies help us because there is a Kaspersky research in 2019 that says that 80% of all malware worldwide is uh, carried by a docx file. Um, just a quick suggestion, before we market our unchanging layout of 20-year-old uh, ODF documents, I think we should talk to uh, Michael Stahl and uh, Miklos. And no, Holly sure, Bruno. but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Absol I mean, absolutely, we have to, if we entered into this kind of messages, we will double check with competent people, no problem. <laughs> you know that, uh, Michael, I... As I said, I tell stories. I never give uh, technical information. 